Hi, this is Mark. In this video, we're going to complete our scene by adding a vignette and some finishing touches. So one of the uh, nice ways to frame a scene is to add a vignette which darkens the outside and focuses our attention to the center. Now, I'm going to go back to OpenGL and to my top view in the node view here. If you had a camera, you can also connect your vignette to the camera so that anywhere the camera tracks, the vignette keeps the frame uh, constant. Uh, in this case, there's no camera, so we're just going to add the vignette on the top here. And to do so, I need to create a new drawing. So let's go to our timeline and go to frame one and control R in the node view or command R on a Mac. Let's type vignette. And I'll move this to the side and add a peg to it by having it selected and hit Control P. If you're on a Mac, that's Command P. Lastly, I will wire it to the top of everything here. And I will go to my color, make sure that I have the composite uh, matte color that I've created. And then uh, I'm going to make a slight adjustment to my tool properties. I'm going to turn this feature off because I actually just want to draw a square so that I can then draw another shape inside it. So make sure this button's off and let's just draw this big square. Now you can't see it in this view because the thickness of my line is too thin, but that's totally fine. Then I want to select the ellipse and make sure that the tool is not filling as well. And I'll draw a nice ellipse in here. Uh, and then we will paint between the square and the ellipse so that we basically have some shape that you know takes this room and creates a hole. Next I'll go in my drawing view, shift M to reset my view, and I'll zoom in here, select my line to delete it, and I'll zoom out here and I'll select my line up here so I have a single shape. And in the node view I'll select the vignette, and then I will sh uh, hit O in the timeline to zoom to it, to make sure that I extend that vignette all the way through to the end. Okay, so now let's uh, just preview this real quick. And while this looks kind of neat, this is more like looking through a telescope. So let's blur this first. So I'll delete what's in my search bar and go to my filter and pick a nice blur radial. And over here, I'll uncheck truck factor and let's make this 100. So we already have a nice framing, but this is a little intense. So let's add a transparency and go down and filter and choose that. And there we go. We have a really nice subtle vignette. If we didn't have that on, I'll disconnect it. We'd have the regular scene, but the vignette just nicely frames everything in there. Another adjustment we can do, and I'll zoom in right on these boxes, is you can see that the background is getting hit by light, but these boxes are really sticking out because that black line is not matching the darkness of the other lines. So we're going to go back inside of our background, and we're going to go up here to the BG box. If I turn it off and on, you can see that we're affecting this box. I'll switch back to OpenGL. And what I want to do is I want to add a composite because we will add another shape on top of it and that will make our new box coming down. So I'll hit Control H to add a composite, Command H on a Mac, and I'll wire this down. And instead of having that wire down, I'll make sure the composite one's going down. So essentially the same thing is happening. I haven't added anything, I've just added a composite. And now I want to add a matte blur to the front of this. So if I put this directly in, you can see what happens. It renders to a white. And the reason we can see this rendering, again, is because we have this render preview. If this wasn't on, everything would get very muddy. But with the render preview, we're allowed to see the blend modes happening right away. Now, I don't want to use white. I want to use some sort of similar tone to this to kind of blend over top my background. So I'll hit the matte blur properties and then I'll click the layer color and I'll draw uh, from this color source by click dragging and letting go once I've picked the color. 
and let's close this down. So now we have the layer properties. We've got our color, and we just need to reduce the alpha. So let's go to 10% of this would be uh, 25 on the alpha. And we can see that dark line is still there. So maybe we'll pump this up to 60 uh, or 80. So 80 looks pretty good. And uh, we can see that now by adding this shape on top, it lightens the boxes enough to blend it with the background element. Uh, that if I disconnected it, this is what it looks like. This sticks out, doesn't feel like it's the same environment. But by adding a matte blur, we have created some atmosphere to this box to fit it in that same environment here. Okay, and then we have one more thing that we can slightly tweak. Uh, let's go in here to the timeline. And I'm going to go here because we can see her eyes. And if we render it, we can maybe say, oh, you know what? Those whites are a little too bright to the contrast of the darkness. So this is sticking out a little too much. And if you recall, in a previous lesson, we used the color selector to cut them out of the filter. So instead, maybe we'll cut them out 50% uh, so that they're not as bright. And I'll just add a transparency and wait for this to render. And there you go. So this basically says we're going to cut the eye whites by 50%. Uh, they still stick out from the rest of the character, but they are not, you know, night vision, shall we say. There is one more thing we'd like to do here, and that's take a look at this shadow. So this shadow is not as intense over here as it would be over there. And if we look at our shadow, we're basically just using the map blur. Here's where we would uh, actually be maybe better off using a shadow, or we could actually just add a blend mode uh, to multiply that shadow down onto the background. So let's do that. And we're going to go blend mode and choose multiply down here. I'm just going to change the name here and type in multiply. And let's just see what that looks like over here. It's uh, blending nicely. And uh, let's just go a little further into it to see that it still holds up. And uh, this looks pretty good. So now what we just want to do is make sure that this plays through pretty well. I'll just go down here and hit my render and play button. Uh, and this will then start rendering uh, to the frames folder and then launch the Toon Boom Play application so that we can preview our frames back. Uh, so I'll just wait for this to finish rendering and we'll be right back. Okay, so that has now completed rendering. I'll just zoom in here a little bit. And if we now play this back, we can see that our character comes out of the darkness into the light, the highlights kick in, the reflections are working, the shadows are all working, and our background's looking good. And this completes our compositing project.